It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Now, let's see about our story for today. Early rains have brought an abundance of grass to Paradise Valley, so much grass that outsiders have driven their cattle here to graze. These men, away from their home ranches, surrounded by strangers, have worked out laws of their own, hard, strict laws, but to them a very real way of administering justice. Among these cowboys is an older man, Lee Fox, and his younger sidekick, Lynn Dean. You'll have to do this for me, Lee. Don't forget, Dad was your partner. You promised to look after me. You promised, Lee. And I've tried. For almost 20 years, I've tried. I want you to change clothes with me. Change clothes? Outfits, horses, everything. You take mine, I'll take yours. Oh, she. Then the man who has the job will follow the wrong one. I'll have a chance to live. It's the only way, Lee. They'll they'll, they'll follow you instead of me. Yeah? Oh, don't worry about yourself, Lee. Everything will be all right. They'll make sure before they do any shooting. They'll see it's you before they pull the trigger. The older man rides all day. At dusk, hungry, dirty, tired, he turns into the lane leading to a ranch house, the Double R Bar Ranch. He knocks at the door. Wearing his clothes, I'd better give his name, I guess. Lynn Dean. Lynn Dean. Well, howdy there. Oh, howdy. You're Roy Rogers, ain't you? I sure am. Come on in. Uh, My name is uh, Lynn Dean. I rode from Thompson's Range today, and I... uh... You must be getting pretty tired then, and hungry, too. I'll see about getting some supper for you. Well, I am hungry. We'll go in here. Come on. But more than anything else, I want a place where I can rest for a few minutes and feel safe. We'll rustle you up some grub in no time. Dale, uh, this is Mr... Uh, Lynn Dean, ma'am. Glad to know you, Mr. Dean. Oh, just a cowboy. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Now, 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 now. Don't go to a lot of trouble. Don't feel you have to interrupt whatever you're doing to talk. I've spent my life on the range, so my own thoughts is company enough. Right now, especially. And make yourself at home. Say, Dale, the cook went into town tonight, so I'm afraid I'll need help in the kitchen. Want to give me a hand? Roy, don't you think we should go in there with him? I reckon he'll come in here when he's finished eating. He's as much as told us he'd rather be alone. Yeah, I know he did, but... He seems so downcast. Yeah. Well, we won't let him leave without trying to help him. Howdy. Howdy there, Roy. Howdy, Pat. Hi, Pat. Hey, wait a minute. What's all that stuff? (laughs) The darn things. Looks to me like you've been working on that Jeep again. (laughs) Yeah, and sometimes I think that Nellie Bell is more bothered than she's worth. What happened this time? I spent the whole darn evening tearing her apart and putting her together again, and she still won't run. Well, what's this stuff you brought in? 
Oh, just some of the parts left over when I got her put back together. I get so aggravated uh, with her. I, I'm Excuse just... Me. Am I interrupting? No, not at all. Come on in. Mr. Dean, I want you to meet Pat Brady. Glad to know <laughs> you, sir. Uh, you folks have been more than kind... And, and oh, I... you're not leaving already. Well, I should say not. You've ridden enough for one day. Spend the night here. I'd like to talk to you in the morning anyway. We need a good hand on the ranch and one who's had a lot of experience. Well, thank you, no. When a man's got a journey to take, he'd best get at it. Well, you're the boss. Uh, we'll walk out with you. Thank you. Glad to meet you, Mr. Brady. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Maybe you could give Mr. Dean a fresh horse. No, that won't be necessary. I'm quite sure I haven't got far to go. Well, stop in again when you ride this way. Eh, you folks will never know how much good being here for this hour did to me. Give me a chance to sum things up and make a decision. Well, good night. Good, good night, night, Mr. Dean. Good night. He's got big troubles, Roy. I know he has, but he didn't seem to want any help. Before I go back to the cafe, I'd better have another word with Pat. That shot came from right outside. Hurry! It may be Mr. Dean. Not another soul out here. Nobody. How bad is he hurt, Roy? Uh, Pat! Pat, bring me a flashlight, quick. What do you think? Well, there seems to be a pulse. You better get hold of the doc and the sheriff. I'll see what I can do for Mr. Dean. We covered the ground for a half a mile around here, Sheriff, and not a sign of anyone. Odd. Mighty odd. Well, even Bullet didn't find anything. Roy. Yes, Dale? The doctor says he has a chance of pulling through, but we're not to count on it. Has he been conscious at all? No. And when he does regain consciousness, if he does, the doctor says he has to have absolute quiet for days, maybe even weeks. We won't be able to talk to him. Well, I'll go back to town, check my files, and see if they tell us anything. Hey, who's this? Oh, oh. Better wait a minute, Sheriff. Howdy, folks. Hi. Howdy. I saw from the road that somebody was still up here, so I thought I'd inquire for a partner of mine. What's his name? Lynn Dean, his cowboy, an old-timer. We've been herding cattle at Thompson's Range. I'm afraid we've got some bad news for you, mister. How bad? Your partner's been shot. He's dead then? No, he's pretty bad, but the doc says he has a chance. Oh, I i guess I'd better go to him right away. He'll want to see me. Well, the doctor's still with him. He won't let him be disturbed for any reason. Is Dean going to stay here? Well, until he's well enough to be moved. What'd you say your name was? Why, I don't believe I said it's uh, Lee Fox, though. Who shot your partner? The sheriff is sure tough when he wants to be. Some of the riders in our outfits have it in for Dean. I, I don't know why, but they have. Sheriff, we'll ride on up to Thompson's Range. Tonight? Right now. You check your files, see what you can find out. Fox, you better go with us so we'll have somebody who knows the men up there. Well, well I... What's the matter? Don't you want to go? Well, sure, sure. The only thing is I, I think I should stay where I can be near Lynn. The doctor won't even let you in to see him. Don't you want to get the men who tried to kill your partner? Are you afraid? Oh, sure, sure. I want. I, I'm not afraid. I, I, I just want to be near my partner. Really, I'm not afraid. Well, how do you like that? All right, Sheriff. We'll get this fellow a room at Dale's hotel. He can do as he likes. For myself, I wouldn't be able to sleep if I didn't do my best to track down the men who tried to kill that old fella. <laughs> You know, Roy loves animals. And here are three of his animal friends that everyone loves. The three Sugar Crisp Bears from the front of the Post Sugar Crisp Package. Hello there. Got a word for the folks? We've got three words. Try Sugar Crisp. Wise words. Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. It's made of nourishing puffed wheat and candy coated with sugar and honey. And you'll love it three different ways. Like the little bears say. As a cereal, Sugar Crisp is dandy. It's just sweet enough. You don't need sugar. Just pour on milk or cream. And for snacks, Sugar Crisp is so handy. Any time of the day or night. 
right again. And... And you can eat sugar crisp just like candy, right out of the box. We love it. Everybody loves sugar crisp. It's a delicious cereal treat any way you eat it. So, Mother, when you're buying a cereal, remember what the three sugar crisp bears say. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post sugar crisp. You'll find genuine post sugar crisp only in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. Buy sugar crisp tomorrow. <laughs> By riding hard all night, Roy, Dale, and Pat arrive at Thompson's Range just after dawn. They locate a herd of cattle, then arrange camp, and go over to talk with the cook who's preparing breakfast while the riders get ready for their day in the saddle. You wait here, Trigger. Come on, Dale. Pat, you too, Bullet. Well, I'll bet Bullet is tired. And so is Patrick Aloysius Brady. Ah, well, who wouldn't be having to ride a horse? That Nellie Bell breaking down at a time like this. Good morning. Uh, howdy, strangers. You're welcome to eat as long as you help fill the wood box. There's the axes. We may take you up on that. Plenty of time to chop before breakfast's ready. No stick more than 16 inches long. The lady can wash dishes. I'd rather chop wood if it's all the same to you. Say, uh, do you happen to know a man by the name of Lynn Dean? I've heard the name. He worked for this outfit? Maybe. Well, does he or not? Partner, a cook's a busy man. If you'd like to be useful, there's a spring 20 rods that away. And here's a water bucket. But if you'd rather go on Gavin, talk to them fellows. Roy looks behind him. Three men have come up. Cowboys, hardened by weather, by the sun and wind and rain. They stand grimly silent, their hands at their sides. Four others, not far away, are walking toward the chuck wagon. Easy, Bullet. Easy, boy. There's nothing to worry about. This your whole outfit? There's three more. Wells Hobbler and Tom Hill. They're still night riding with the herd. And one other man who's on the trail. There's some strangers here, boys. They want to know about Dean. What do you think we ought to tell them? Maybe it would help if I told you what I know first. Watch out, Roy. Do you know that Lynn Dean is an ordinary skunk partner? Just remember, you said that. Do you know that he's a thief who'd rob a dead man? Then sneak away under cover of night? No, I don't. Well, the boys and I do. We had Dean setting up with one of the outfit, a man who was sick. Dean was to tend him through the whole black night. When the sun rose next morning, we went to relieve him. He'd gone. The sick man was dead. Oh, the sick man's death was natural enough, but the way his saved-up wages had disappeared wasn't. Them wages had gone with Lynn Dean. That's hard to believe. Tell you how true it is. His pal, a man who'd been riding with him for 20 years, was so ashamed he left camp before the sun come up. He couldn't face us. Was the pal's name Lee Fox? You from the law, partner. Unofficially. When we're strangers in the territory and without law officers of our own choosing, we take care of our own. How? We hold a meeting. Figure what ought to be done to a man who's gone bad. Then we draw lots. Whichever one of us loses in the drawing deals out the punishment. But we stand by him, lawman. He was doing our bidding. We stand by him. Lynn Dean was shot. We expected he would be. One of you men here did it. No, it wasn't any of us. We'll talk to your two night riders then. And it wasn't our night riders. Then it has to be the man on the trail. Well, starch my socks, bet it is. Hold it, partner. All three of you. Don't move. Hands slip to belts. Fingers close over gun butts and remain there. A grim-faced cowboy stares silently at Roy, Dale, and Pat within their circle. No man makes any other sign save the cook. The cook has become the leader. We're on your side, partner, because we believe in the law, too. If we didn't, we wouldn't have made our own. But because we made our own, we're duty-bound to protect the men who carry out its orders. Yeah, you've got a point there, but you've overlooked something, haven't you? What's that? The law of the land is bigger than the law you made. Only to outsiders. Now, you folks do just as you're told. Nobody will get hurt unless you try to ride off. And if we do ride off? That'd be foolish. All we aim to do is hold you here until Tom Rowe gets back from the trail. 
and for 24 hours afterwards, so he'll have a chance to get ahead of your law. Tom Rowe is the name of the man who shot Dean, huh? Somebody there speak about me? Well, I'm glad you're back, Tom. And I haven't been much of any place yet. You've been far enough to connect up with Lynn Dean. Who are these hombres? Lawmen who come to get you for shooting Dean. And a little early. I didn't shoot Dean yet. Well, he's sure been shot. Well, not by me. I started out to get him, and my horse threw me. I've been lying on the trail most of a day and night, coming to, I guess. Then you won't mind coming back with us and clearing your name. He says he didn't do it. That makes his name already clear. I think you'd better come back. Oh, can't do no harm, Cook. You're staying. There's no call for him to go, stranger. Bullet. I keep that dog quiet, partner. I want this man to go with us. He's staying here even if we Bullet. have to. Look out! Bill, Pat, draw your gun. Got him! Best of you raise your hand. Take him down, Bullet. Take him, boy. That's enough, Bullet. Guard him there. Don't let him up. You others loosen your gun belts and let him fall to the ground. Row, stand over here. Hi, dog, these things happen fast there for a minute. <laughs> you can say that again. Let him up, Bullet. Thanks. I never was partial to fighting dogs. And this fellow's pretty well trained, grabbing a man's gun arm first thing. I know you feel the same way about your law that we feel about ours. Yeah. We're taking Roe down with us to clear his name. If we have to, we'll take all of you. But there's no need of that if you give us your word not to interfere. Well, it can't hurt for me to go. I didn't shoot anybody. How about it, Cook? You believe in the fairness of the law, and so do we. We'll take your word. Okay, we'll give it. Uh, how about a little chow before you go? The wood box needs filling, though. There's the axes. Fine. We are hungry after riding all night. Let's grab an axe and go to work, Pat. The former enemies eat together, each with a deep respect for the other. When the meal is over, Roy, Dale, and Pat take Tom Rowe and begin the long day's ride to Mineral City. About dusk, they reach the Double R Bar and stop at the ranch house before going into town. Oh, oh. oh easy, oh, Buttermilk. We'll feel a lot better if we wash up before going into town. Yeah, and see how Lynn Dean feels. Yeah, after riding a horse all day, it's easy to see why folks prefer autos. Wow. You come with us, Tom. Is you, Roy? Sheriff, what are you doing here? I've had my troubles, Roy. Yeah, I bet she's been taking a nap. Doc almost got killed. Doc? How could that be? The man who's after Lynn Dean made another try at it. Almost got Doc. Doc sent for me. Then no more than an hour ago, there was another try. I took after him, but lost the trail. Oh, it looks as though the killer means business. Yeah, but I guess that about clears your name, Tom. We brought this man in, Sheriff. Uh, there was some question about whether or not he did the shooting. But that's out now. Well, I'd like my name to be still more clear. Take me in and let Dean have a look at me. He's still unconscious, isn't he, Sheriff? About halfway. Well, let's go in. It can't hurt any if we're quiet. Yeah, give me a certain amount of pleasure to see him get what's coming to him. You know Dean better than I do, but I can't feel that way about it. Neither can I. Well, there he is. Him? Why, yes. Well, that's not Dean. That's Lee Fox, one of the best old fellows who ever lived. Well, he said his name was Dean. Well, he was Dean's partner. Hey, he's opened his eyes. Hey, Lee. Lee, it's Tom Rowe. I want to ask you something. Was it me who tried to kill you? The pallid face on the bed stares vacantly for a moment. The eyes come to a focus on Rowe. A faint smile of recognition flits across the old lips, and a weak hand lifts itself almost imperceptibly in greeting. Consciousness leaves him again. We'd better go. Those clothes in that outfit near the room, where'd they come from? Well, they're his. He had them when he dropped in for supper. But they're not his. They belong to Dean. How could that be? And I don't know. They were partners. The old fellow practically raised Dean. Looked after him like he was a son. Every time Dean got into trouble, the old man just about cracked up. Did the old man know about this latest trouble? Well, I imagine so. I'm sure he did. Say, could they have changed places so Dean could get away? Dale, that's it. Pat, get Bullet. Let's try to put him on that young fellow's trail. They switched clothes and outfits so Dean would have a chance to get away. Switched names, even. But I don't see you... And Dean tried to kill the old man. 
and go scot-free under the old man's name of Lee Fox. Come on, Bullet. His first shot didn't do it. He's been coming back to finish the job. Here's Bullet, Roy. The bedroom. He's here again. He's here again. Come on. We'll be with Roy in a second. First, listen to this cheery melody. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, Sugar Crisp is a honey of a new cereal. And the three Sugar Crisp Bears are right. It's wonderful three different ways. As a cereal... It's already pre-sweetened. You won't need sugar, just milk or cream. And Sugar Crisp is the perfect between-meal snack. Or eat it like candy right out of the box. Made of nourishing puffed wheat, it has a candy coating of energy-rich sugar and honey. That's why Sugar Crisp is so good. Buy Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it tomorrow. Let's get into that bedroom. The window's broken, Roy. Shot through the window. There. Look down the lane towards the road. That's the man, Roy. And he's heading for the road. Come on, Bullet. Let's get Trigger. You have to stay here and take care of the old man. Come on, Trigger. After him. We've got to catch that man. Up there, Trigger. Get in there, boy. It's all right, fella. Let him empty his gun. Here you go. Yeah, that'll quiet you for a while. Oh, Stand around here. You, you, you got... tried to kill the old man. Don't deny it or I'll work you over again. Uh, that's Lindine Roy. I'll take care of him right now. No, no, don't don't let him kill me. I'll confess. I did shoot Lee Fox. I'll gun him down if it's the last thing I ever do. Oh, no, you don't, Tom. This is our law here. We're mining it. Take over, Sheriff. Well, we'll help you. But this hombre is going to get everything the law can give him. Yes, sir. You know, I had a really big idea, and it worked out fine. Nellie Bell has a sister. Whoa, now. Take a it easy. sister? Another Jeep? Well, you know all them parts I had left over when I put Nellie Bell together again? Yeah. The last time? Yeah. Well, I, I took a few more, and I started building another Jeep. And the oh. first thing you know, I had a whole one. Oh. And it runs just fine. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you, hey! What's the matter? Hey, where's Nellie Bell? She was standing right there. Well, she's still there. No, no. That's the new car I just built. That looks like Nellie Bell. Well, well naturally. They're sisters. I took... I took... Oh. Oh, Roy. You know what I think I've done? Oh, I'm afraid I do. I took so many parts from Nellie Bell to build her sister. There ain't none of her left. <laughs> All I did was tear Nellie Bell down and build her up again. Oh, Pat. Just hold everything, Pat. You're young. You'll learn. Why, I wouldn't be surprised if you learned enough to go back to a horse in another ten years. The right to vote for the candidate of your choice is one of the most precious rights of our democracy. But too many of us forget that it is also a duty. Remember, your vote is your guarantee of freedom. Be sure you vote on November 4th. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls... Remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. 
You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production, tonight's show was directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, and music by Milton Charles. Come and get it, come and get it, a quick two-minute energy for work and play. How about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them, how about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or tripled your money back. Look for Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in the cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Ralph Moody, Leo Curley, and Paul Conrad. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup. 